Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have two more sets of examples that deal with Newton's second law primarily, F equals ma, and where we're supposed to find the acceleration of the whole system. And again, we ignore all the internal forces and only look at the forces acting on the system itself. Notice that the first two examples are identical, except for this one has no friction, where this one has friction between this object and the table. Here, these two are identical. That one has no friction. This one has friction. So how do we work this? How do we find acceleration? Well, see some commonalities. First of all, we need to assume a direction of acceleration of the whole system. So it looks like in each case, the object hanging on the right side is bigger than the other object or objects, and therefore it tends to take the whole system and make it accelerate in a clockwise direction. And so that's a better way to think about it. The acceleration is in a clockwise direction. Notice also that we identify all the forces that act on it. We start with the forces due to gravity. And then, of course, here, since on the table, there's an opposing force of the table pushing back with an equal magnitude but opposite direction. We have the same thing over here. And then with the third mass, notice that we have another force of gravity acting this way. And here, the same. And then when there's friction, we also need to take into account the direction of the friction, which is typically opposite direction to the assumed motion of the system, because friction tends to retard the motion of the system. And notice that the definition of the friction is equal to the normal force times mu. In this case, the normal force is m1g. Here, the normal force is m2g. So how do we work out the problem? We again, we say that the acceleration is equal to the aiding forces minus the opposing forces divided by the total mass of the system. In this example, the aiding force is simply m2g. There's no opposing forces. The two forces cancel each other out. There's no other forces in the opposite direction to acceleration, so that's zero. And we divide by the total mass to give us the acceleration. Here, with, when we have friction, notice now we do have an opposing force. The opposing force is the friction force, the normal force times mu, which is m1g times mu. Subtract the opposing force from the aiding force. Supposedly, the aiding force is bigger than the opposing force, so there will be an acceleration in the indicated direction, and we divide by the total mass to give us the acceleration. And then finally, in our final example here, notice we have the aiding force, m3g, but we have an opposing force right here, because this force will cause the whole system to uh, accelerate in the counterclockwise direction if it was the prevailing force, so it opposes the assumed direction, and also the friction force assumes the opposing direction. In this case, it's N2 times mu. N2 is M2G, so M2G mu is the opposing friction force. Subtract the two opposing forces from the aiding force, divide by the total mass. In this case, there's three masses, and that gives you the acceleration of the system. Notice that it's, very, it's a very straightforward method. It's very simplistic. You just have to identify the aiding forces, the opposing forces, divide by the total mass of the system, and you have the acceleration of the system. You don't need to use any free body diagrams. However, that said, we will show you a summary example of how to use a free body diagram to solve similar types of problems. That will come later. And this is how it's done.